The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 388. We're in the third week of October of 2024. I'm Ethan. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. Well, WWE's on the road to Crown Jewel. Their uh, biannual Saudi event. And uh, AEW had a Wrestle Dream pay per view this past weekend. Brian Danielson's uh, full time career allegedly ended, and Hiroshi Tanahashi has announced his retirement date. Lots of things to get into here. Let's start with this Crown Jewel build. So they've decided to do um, kind of a uh, a a backwards version of uh, the Survivor Series thing they did with brand supremacy for years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except instead they're doing champion versus champion matches for this crown jewel. And then the winner of the champion versus champion matches will be crowned the first ever crown jewel champion. They've given away so many trinkets in the desert over there. They've (laughs) given away the, the wrestling world cup. There is the, the Saudi Mountain Trophy or whatever the, to the Undertaker Mountain. was. Yeah. Undertaker yeah. won it without taking his jacket off. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. And now we have a Crown Jewel Championship. Uh, I applaud the effort to try to make this uh, something, but I probably wouldn't give away Cody versus Gunther for no reason. Uh, and a match with uh, with no stakes. But hey, uh, what do you think about the build to this show so far? Only two matches are set for the show and that's uh Cody versus Gunther and Nia Jax versus Liv Morgan in a heel versus heel battle. Um I'm more excited for what Liv versus Nia is gonna look like, I think, than I am for uh Cody versus Gunther. Understandable. Crown Jewel is not a work rate show, even if oh, on paper no. that's the better match. So And you have to assume these guys both know they'll have another match down the line that will be the real one. So, right. uh, Yeah. What I'm really just excited for, based on their already uh, spectacular interactions on SmackDown and Raw this past week, uh, just just super jazzed for more uh, Liv and Liv and Naya interaction. Aside from this Crown Jewel stuff, Uh, this is this is traditionally the annual lame duck period for WWE, and <laughs> programming could be pretty dire here over the next couple of months. Except we got Roman Reigns in for several weeks in a row here. Uh, Roman is pretty much going to be around until Survivor Series. Uh, it's the the most dates he's worked in a row in years. <laughs> um and good for him um just feels like survivor series is the real show unfortunately we have another four weeks after this program before we get to survivor series so um kind of some it's hard to say lame duck television when you're actively building a pay-per-view but uh the, the, the wwe television over the next couple of weeks um, probably not the most consequential shows you've ever seen in your life. No, yeah, they're they're drip feeding things that will become important. Like they're starting the build to Jay reuniting with with Jim and Roman, right? Um, so like that will be a big deal, and people will go crazy for it when it happens. But we are six weeks maybe away from that. Yeah, <laughs> so we have to draw that out quite a bit and yeah kind of the same thing same thing i mean cody cody and ko is a is a direction they i think we didn't do a show that week but they shot an angle on twitter for kevin turning on cody after the last pay-per-view so um yeah they're they're doing that and then kevin's also kind of feuding with randy orton (laughs) yeah it's like they're doing stuff it's just like we're kind of we're just moving at that real slow pace because we've got so much time before they plan on actually paying any of this stuff off. 
Hey, two hour raws are are uh, are back. We've had the first couple of uh, two hour raws in more than ten years here uh, this month, and I gotta say, um, my big takeaway: pro wrestling weekly television shows were not meant to be three hours. Oh, one hundred percent. Raw is so much better as a two hour show. Oh, it's so much more tolerable. They did still fit in a Miz and carrying cross and our truth thing but because yeah. the show's only two hours they got like two and a half minutes yeah instead of like a two segment match like this definitely would have gone for all was still three hours sure so there's even the bad stuff on the show is more palatable because they don't have as much time to faff around with it so <laughs> uh even even the miz is more tolerable when the show's only two hours hey and i gotta say joe Tessator. He was he was born for, he was born this way, baby. <laughs> He's on the right track, baby. He was born this way. He is, uh, he was built for this. He was built to endure this. What a guy! Yeah, well, we'll see if he follows the track record of uh, every other good wrestling commentator of like the last twenty five years, and slowly gets worse. But we're on the up we're on the uptrend right now, so we'll enjoy the uh, the summit while we can. Yeah. What do you think about WWE shooting those angles with Cody and uh, Kevin Owens primarily on social media? They've it's spilled over to TV a little bit, but then it's continued to get them with more social media stuff this week. And um, I guess it'll be recapped and addressed on TV. And but just generally, what do you think about um, uh, these Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes uh, angles playing out on social media? I think it's worth trying um a, a a frequent critique of wrestling television over the last you know 100 years is that these guys are like preserved in amber when they're not on television and so what like these guys don't talk to each other or or say anything to each other when the cameras aren't rolling so the idea of doing something doing a big angle like that not in the middle of the ring with a bunch of cameras staring at them is like i i I can see the argument for it, but I I wouldn't do it often, I guess is my thing. I think it's worth trying here as an experiment. And like you said, as long as they do some sort, you know, continue to recap it on television as it happens, it's probably worth dulling that out every once in a while, just to make you, you know, make it feel like the, the, these stories go on when the cameras aren't rolling, but yeah, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't stick out to me as like this incredible, brilliant thing, but I was also like, yeah, I, I could see why that's, that's an idea worth trying once in a while. I don't know. What did you think? Yeah, pretty much the same. Let's uh, yeah. Yeah. We can try this. And because it's not, uh, it's not the feud happening right now. It's the, it's the next feud. Right. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. We can do some background stuff right now. Like I, I don't my background stuff. Um, yeah. Let's just continue to think outside the box. <laughs> that would be great. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, the build to WWE crown jewel so far. And, um, uh, the former president, Donald Trump, is uh, there's a report going around here this week that he's going to be on the Undertaker's podcast. Um, Two of your favorite guys, the uh, the orange chair guy I, and the uh, and uh, and President Trump. Hey, yo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I had two thoughts. One, I think if this happens. Mean Mark will be so far up Trump's ass. Sure. <laughs> that yeah. it will even make Trump uncomfortable. <laughs> uh. Well, you know, Vince is out of his life now. He needs a new billionaire daddy. So I guess that makes he sense. Yeah. Too. So to idolize. So I yeah. think I think he'll be I wonder if he'll wear a suit for it. Like Jericho did when he had Don Jr. on. Ugh. Probably and you know in a suit. It'll be all it'll be all black. Yeah, of course. Of course. Black suit, black shirt, black tie. Living the gimmick. Black socks. Living the gimmick on his podcast where he <laughs> talks about his fake wrestling career. Uh yeah. That, I don't he, know. that he doesn't remember well. Yes. <laughs> 
And even if he did, he has nothing interesting to say. <laughs> no, it's 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 because he hid in his hotel room every night and drank Jack Daniels <laughs> with the Godfather. It's so sad, right? <laughs> it's like this guy. He had a almost 40 year career in the ring. He worked lots of places kind of as the territories were dying. Mm-hmm. He worked WCW. He was there through every phase of WWF from the cartoon Hogan era, (laughs) even if it was at the tail end of it, Mm -hmm. all the way through to today. (laughs) Unfortunately, yes, he was going to strip clubs with the Godfather and playing dice in his hotel room (laughs) (laughs) and was not particularly interested in anything that was going on around him. (laughs) Apparently. (sighs) Boring. (laughs) It's so bad, man. And it's like, even on these documentaries with like Sean and Triple H, it's like, you know, you're not going to get the unvarnished truth sure. from them because they're they have to be political. On the other hand, you get so much more insight <laughs> <laughs> or at least they like recount a story we've heard a hundred times before in a somewhat entertaining way with like a little bit of exuberance. <laughs> <laughs> right. They don't just stand there in a monotone Texas accent and just repeat back the events. <laughs> and like, yeah, when that happened, I couldn't believe it. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. That was really helpful. Appreciate that. Me, old mean Mark Calloway, just just going crazy for it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. This is uh, I look. <laughs> I'm this sure is, this the, is the demographic, the demographic that listens to that podcast. It's hard for me to imagine uh, anyone that listens to that not already being on that team. Yeah. But sure. I guess that's just what you do now. You you do you do the Undertaker podcast, you do the Logan Paul podcast or Logan Paul's brother podcast or whatever and then you do uh Rogan and the the blonde mullet guy with the weird voice. Uh, the Yvonne? Yeah, that one. Just, just go on all those shows and you cater to a uh, a certain audience, certain percentage of their audiences. I won't cast aspersions on everyone who listens to those shows, but sure, you know, most sure. of them. Sure. All right. Well, President Trump on the Undertaker's podcast. That's that'll be something. Hey, I I hope it's kind of like. Actually, ironically speaking, that the Ovan guy where Trump is like asking Undertaker questions. Yeah, <laughs> well, hopefully. asking him about blading and yeah and stuff. Yeah, well, he he likes to keep kayfabe a little bit, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Uh, so that that could be interesting. He'll he'll ask him about uh, if he's really dead or mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Anyway, is he what's really going to confuse him is that Paul Bearer was actually a mortician. <laughs> Well, he's easily confused, as we know from the Vince Limo thing. Right. Well, that's just going to tie his brain in knots. So it really yeah. is. All right. Uh, we have a new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Zack Sabre Jr. has dethroned Tetsuya Naito. Uh, the G1 winner took his title shot in October this year. Uh, that's fine. I mean, whatever. It's an awful long time from August to January. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I don't know what the rush was to get this match done, unless we have we have something special planned for uh, for January. I don't know, but Zack Saber is the new IWGP champion, and Hiroshi Tanahashi has announced that he is retiring at the Tokyo Dome, not upcoming here in two months, but in uh, fourteen months or so, uh, January fourth, twenty twenty sixth, twenty twenty six. Uh, that's it for Hiroshi Tanahashi. One more year of the ace. Uh, one of the one of the all time greats on the short list of uh, Mount Rushmore candidates for me, and he is uh, unfortunately uh, probably uh, two or three years uh, too late in this announcement. But uh, uh, the guy's body just has totally betrayed him. But uh, thoughts on new world champion Zack Saber? And um, the retirement of uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi, the president of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Mr. President. Speaking from one president to the other. Um, 
yeah, no, as far as uh, Saber winning the title, yeah, good. He's He's been there forever. You, you All of your other top foreigners have left <laughs> the company. Yes. yes. Um, and you need a guy who hasn't already been in that. I mean, Saber wrestled all of the top guys every year for like the G1, and then he'd get like the new Japan cup title shot or something, but right. they, he hasn't, they haven't seriously pushed him as a top guy ever. So he still feels semi fresh to that, that level of things. So yeah, it's good. Is his work is still good. Um, I, again, still question who they have for him to defend against, but you, you've got some time between now and January. If he's still the champion then. Yeah. To, uh, to, to get him a title contender that feels worthy of the dome, or maybe this is the year Hiromu finally, <laughs> finally gets the main event the Tokyo Dome. Maybe so. I don't know what we're waiting for. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and knock that out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, as far as Tanahashi, I mean, it's it sounds sad to say that he's retiring because yes, he's one of the greatest I, I've ever seen, and I probably haven't even seen all of his best stuff. Um, you know, and you can look at the history of that company. It's, it's a pretty well-known story that like he, he saved the company, (laughs) like just by being great. Um, that kind of led to like the, the feud with him and Shibata that was kind of just prior to the boom of new Japan with the bullet club stuff was based around Shibata leaving the company and, and Tanahashi staying and bringing the company up in popularity so it's like there's, you know, that's he has a case to be one of the greatest of all times from a work standpoint and from like a business standpoint. And yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, you know, I, I'm fine with the, you know, the Muda style, take a year victory lap. Every, sh- you know, every show becomes like the last his last match in X town. Yeah, um, that's fine. You do that. You could do a couple more American dates. There will be another Forbidden Door show and whatever. So you could you could do a few more. You could do a little world tour of of Tanahashi, and he can do six bands every night and do the twist and shout and the high fly flow that he can sort of still do and uh, and and get his victory lap and his flowers. That's that's great. Um, and yeah. Ironic, ideally, like you said, this would have happened a few years ago when he could still kind of move a little bit. Because I do understand the impulse of like a guy this good can't. We shouldn't have got had to see a guy at that level ever like start to decay. <laughs> right. And so it's good to just put a period on it and not be like some of the other New Japan grandpas who still work into their you know mid and mid and high 50s but also never worked the type of style or tried to carry the physique that tanahashi carried so um yeah i think this is good ideally it would have been a few years ago but uh yeah good it'll be it'll be an exciting uh it'll be exciting moment and it'll be something that will you know be a super emotional moment when it finally when it finally happens AEW had Wrestle Dream this past weekend, and I saw. Let's see, probably forty percent of this show, sixty percent of the show. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Danielson's career was ended by John Moxley in the main event, and uh, there was a Chris Jericho ROH World Title match on the show. And uh, the Young Bucks kept the tag team titles of a private party. And Darby Allen won. And Hologram won a two out of three falls match. And Takeshita won the, Air- in the international title, uh, pinning Osprey. That's the only part that surprised me, really, was that Osprey took the pin. Uh, Jack Perry kept the TNT title. Mariah May kept the women's title. Jay White beat Hangman Page. C- certainly makes. Um, dynamite this week more puzzling. So those are kind of the the big results from from the Russell Dream pay per view this past Saturday. Come out of it with John Moxley is the new world champion. Uh, Mariah May is the women's world champion. Jack Perry is the TNT champion. The Young Bucks are the tag team champions. 
Uh, Takeshita is the international champion. Uh, the continental champion is Okada. I think we have all heel champions in this company. Correct. Uh, <laughs> yeah, everyone, male, female, singles, tag, all heels up and down the show currently. I mean, I guess stuff works out that way sometimes. Uh, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. This show was uh, was super underwhelming to me. Um, I've never seen the air go out of a building quite the way it did when Danielson was pinned by Moxley in the main event. And um, yeah, just what do you think of uh, the results of this show? Um, Yeah, I mean, the main event obviously was the thing everybody was talking about coming out of it. It was obviously a deliberate attempt to make a moment and you sacrifice the... (laughs) You probably, you risk killing the town, so to speak, um, for hopefully building up John Moxley and his group to feel like a bigger deal going forward. So so just to, to clarify for those who may have missed it, Danielson, uh, he like passed out in a hold. (laughs) Yes. In, in, in Moxley's bulldog choke or whatever. That was, that was the finish. He passed out and then got brutalized. Wheeler Yuta turned on him after the show, put the bag back on his head. Yeah. People tried to make the save. They got beat up too. Um, so yeah, it was it was a real downer ending of the uh, of the show. So look, it's now on you, and we talked about this a little bit off the air. You need to. It's a very difficult tightrope when you have a group like this who is just causing chaos and beating everyone up, and is so invincible. One to not get them cheered, and two to at the same time which can seem paradoxical when this portion of your show is all about building heat on the new bad, you know, the new top bad guys. But you also need to like be simultaneously building up strong baby faces to confront these people. Yes. Um, So we can look at it and let's just throw a dart and say the end result planned here is that Darby is going to be John Moxley for the title sometime next year. Right. That's fine. Yeah, makes sense based on where this all started. Um, that would make sense. So it is now on you. <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> do not let John Moxley a become a babyface because he's just so dominant and destroys everybody. Um, and B to have to continue to build up other credible baby faces that can stand against this group. Uh, in the meantime, while you wait to get the if if Darby is your sting and we're a year out and he's just going to be in the rafters pointing his baseball bat at Moxley for a while here, you still need you still need Lugers and Savages and people that can and giants that can challenge Moxley in the meantime. You know what? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, my fear with this angle, as you mentioned, and as we talked about, is that Moxley is just going to look like such a badass after cutting cool promos and physically destroying the entire roster for months and months. Moxley, either um, by circumstance or by design, is going to be such a g- giant baby face at the end of this. <laughs> and... Like, fine, okay, we'll have a big baby face at the end of this. Unfortunately, it's the guy that you're, you is trying to be the biggest heel. I don't, I don't, I don't. Like I said, it's a fine line. And, uh, you know, my, my, I posited this to you. Like, okay, you, you could say something similar about Roman Reigns over the last few years. Yeah. Given his booking in the matches was very heelish, but the announcers never acted like it was. <laughs> Um, That was frustrating. They they very much pushed him as the most dominant champion of all time. And, you know, he had a baby face entrance and yeah, but when the time came for Cody to beat him crowd loved Cody and believed in Cody and wanted Cody to win. So that's why I just really want to hammer again, the idea of like, you have to keep your baby faces strong because yes, if you just feed everybody into the meat grinder it can seem like a good idea up front, but then that's months and months of <laughs> if you don't if you don't get somebody to that level where some where people are clamoring to see that guy, that guy specifically be the one to beat Moxley, then this will be all for naught. 
other than as you said just you end up making moxley the baby face out of this which isn't like a disaster but it seems counter to the point which was i would assume be make a new baby face top star of your company so whether that's darby or it's swerve or it's whoever whoever you want to be that like north star baby face going forward yeah you just gotta be careful <laughs> yeah uh danielson was one of your guys what do you think about uh, the end of his full-time career if indeed that's what we witnessed yeah i feel like everything since the wembley show has just felt like a little like the last little bit of the air being lit out of the balloon sure um so i feel like i had my moment to ponder his career on that show and so anything after this has felt a little uh underwhelming i guess um sure. i guess yeah the how brutal it was they certainly set it up that he's gonna come back one day and and yes. seek revenge yes um so i'm sure he'll wrestle again someday but yeah as far as his full-time career being over Maybe it's also because he's been hurt so much the last two years. So it's like, I've already gone like six months with no Brian Danielson before. <laughs> right. Or the four years he was retired the first time. Um, right. Right. So, yeah, I think that's there's there's a lot of stops and starts in this man's career. So maybe that's why it, it didn't hit me immediately. Like, oh, my God, this is the end. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's it's when another guy when you look at the body of his career he is he has a case to be one of the most influential and you know best wrestlers of of a generation and um yeah it's it's not a it's uh, like the shows are going to be worse that now that brian danielson aren't on them i don't think that's uh controversial to say but i guess yeah i was kind of I feel like I went through my 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 stages of grief, so to speak, leading up to that, uh, leading up to that Wembley show, and he got his little, he got his happy ending on that show, and then everything after that has been like just, uh, just the the last the last synapses of the brain uh, firing as as he, as we flatline here. Well, that was beautiful. <laughs> I don't, I, I. It's hard for me to be too sad when uh, he's going to wrestle like six times a year anyway. <laughs> it's like well, that too. It's like getting upset yeah. when like when the streak was over or something. It's like the Undertaker was wrestling once a year at that point. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're going to see Brian Danielson still. I mean, you won't be able to get rid of the guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. He'll be wrestling four or six times a year. And by the time you you you're on TV to build those matches. Okay, well, he's going to be on half as much as he's on now. <laughs> okay, that's still still a fair amount of Brian Danielson. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's yeah. You have you have to go away for like years, I think, for <laughs> for the absence to really be felt. And sure, the way we're talking, right? He's already done before, and right. He's talking about. I guess I guess he is maybe going to get a neck surgery, so maybe it'll be you know eight months or or nine months before we see him again even if it's that long that's still not still not that long so right right um yeah there's that too it's not it doesn't really feel like we've we've actually put a period on the account uh on on the career the way that you know sting's last match was or or some of the other greats or what was undertaker's last match (laughs) um was it a saudi match they ended up doing the uh, the cinematic match with AJ. Oh, Wild right, 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 right. At WrestleMania, and ev- everyone liked that. But sure, it was sure. like, well, he, he couldn't do a real match anymore. So, mm-hmm. so we anyway. Um, Dynamite this week. Hey, look, I um, there's a whole uh, cottage industry of podcast grifters who um. <laughs> try to make a name for themselves by talking about how much they hate AEW. And that's never what I've tried to do here. One, because uh, I'm not as talented as uh, those guys are cutting promos. And two, I just, you know, it's not, I'm not doing it for gimmick purposes. It's just like AEW is just never um, quite exactly uh, struck the right, the right chord with me. And now here we are. Um, but my takeaway, and this doesn't matter. 
so I I clar I clarify uh, or I preface my comments with with the, with those clarifications. Uh, Dynamite this week I thought was an absolute mess. I have no idea what this company is trying to do. I don't know what they're doing. Um, it doesn't matter because they're they got they got they secured the bag and they're going to be making hundreds of millions of dollars over the next three years and potentially four years. And none of it doesn't matter. No one cares what I think. That said, I have no idea what this company is trying to be. There's no unifying vision up and down the card. Uh, I just thought Dynamite was a mess this week. Uh, any thoughts uh, in particular on Dynamite for you? I mean, I don't... I think, to me, what this week felt like it was missing, given the you know the big paradigm shift uh, pun intended that nice. happened on sunday everybody up and down the show should be talking about this new group that's killing people and the fact that brian danielson's dead right and most of it it was basically contained into about three segments there's a promo at the start of the show and then the bcc guys run in and beat up uh, the baby faces in the elite six man. Right. And, and then some other baby faces run down and they get their asses beat. And then there's like one segment later where they're continuing to beat up the same guys in the, in the parking lot. And then they speed off in their pickup truck. So to me, it's like, it's missing a certain sense of danger that, uh, that some of that other stuff, like th that they're trying to emulate had, yeah um like everybody it needs to be all hands on deck i also think it should be like just aesthetically uh these guys should try to kill the elite too <laughs> because who are because if the idea is that moxley hates goofing off and complacency right that's their gimmick man <laughs> yeah they're goofy and complacent it very much and is even if you don't believe that's what they actually are in real life mm, uh <laughs> that's that's the gimmick on television. They're right. rich and they throw their weight around and they don't try very hard and they're smug. Like that's yes. the whole gimmick. Yes. So Moxley should be Moxley's guys should be trying. You can have them run away, but they should be running for their lives, not standing in the aisle gawking at uh, Moxley's group. Yeah, uh, they did. It. They did that weird tease this week where it was like, well, <sighs> I understand what they're trying to do. It's like these guys are such heels that even the heels don't want anything to do with them. Right. On the other hand, uh, to your point, yeah, it doesn't really fit, and uh, they should they should be running away too. Yeah, they should be terrified. Um, and then they kind of, right, and I don't know. Based on the fact that they also made a point of calling out Kenny Omega on this show, I don't think the elite are going to go baby face to fight this group and defend AEW. I don't think that's the plan. It doesn't seem like it. And I wouldn't do that because I don't think this version of the elite are popular. credible, credible or popular. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't do that now anyway, but um, they have the bit afterwards where Daniel Garcia and whoever came up and like got the elites face about like, why aren't you stopping this? This is your company. And they kind of blow them off or whatever. Um, so it's like, it feels like it's got to come to a head. At some point, you have to have these groups interact. And when that happens, the elite just needs to get crushed <laughs> by by Moxley's group. If you're, Or they need to just, like I said, just hightail it every time. Sure. And and, uh, and run away. So that's, that's my fault. That's one of my thoughts is that, generally speaking, I think having a smorgasbord of styles is not necessarily a bad thing. I think if you look at the first few dynamites that were ever created, that's all those shows were. It was PWG indie stuff mixed with Cody doing WCW mixed with whatever else they, they had going on. Like yeah. Joey Janela was doing. Yeah. And that was, it was, it was chaotic at times. It didn't always all fit together. It didn't always all work. Sometimes you had the nightmare collective, a division of the nightmare family. <laughs> yes. But, uh, you know, by and large, people liked those shows a lot more and uh, people watched those shows a lot more than they are, than they like and are watching these shows now. Yeah. So, um, so it's not as if you can't have a chaotic scattershot approach to this and have it work, but it's just what they are doing. The individual bits of different stuff they are doing, I don't think work. 
And then when you add in the fact that you're theoretically trying to do this like overarching company-wide storyline where nobody is safe and everybody's on edge, I just don't get that vibe. Like Adam Cole comes out at the start of the show and just cuts his promo on MJF. Doesn't mention Danielson, doesn't mention BCC. Mark Briscoe and Chris Jericho cut promos on the show. Neither of them mention it. Like there's just stuff up and down the show. There's little things you can do to make this feel a little bit more cohesive that uh, maybe the continuity editor or whatever Will Washington's <laughs> job is can, can work on that for next week. I'm so, I'm so bitter about it. <laughs> I'm so bitter about him. The, you want, uh, you are advocating for a 1986 Crockett show where everyone's talking about dusty yes. <laughs> and, and dusty, Dusty's dusty had his hand broken and everybody should be talking about it or this, is, this is the first show too after hogan turned heel it's like everyone yes was just talking about how hogan turned heel ray mysterio was just so broken up <laughs> you know they had never interacted on television before <laughs> You watch the night show after Hogan joins the NWO and Rey Mysterio is like in tears and cutting a promo <laughs> about how about Hulk Hogan turning on WCW. That's tremendous. Yeah, that's what I'm advocating for. It's... All right, good. <laughs> let's, let's do some WCW stuff. That's great. Oh, speaking of that, uh, Adam Cole, um, Adam Cole's back to feud with MJF. Last time we saw these guys, MJF was babyface. Adam Cole was a heel. Mm-hmm. He's literally the devil. Now and by Adam extension, Cole... we must assume a bad little bitch and a rebel. Oh, whoa, whoa. Now we know Adam um, is buying a house uh, by himself. And we know that Adam is a baby face again. And he's going to feud with a heel MJF who's off in Hollywood uh, sending in his promos via satellite. Um, last time we did this program, 200,000 people stopped watching the show. Uh, let's just not go back to MJF and Adam Cole is my suggestion, or let's just blow it off on TV. Eh, how about next week? <laughs> I'd be fine with that. Um, worst case scenario. Yes. I, I would do one pay-per-view cycle. You do the match clean finish. We're done. <laughs> Um, I understand needing to pay this off because you built your television or wanting to pay this off because you built your television around it for nine months. Yeah. Um, But yes, at some point they realized that everyone involved was miscast. And (laughs) so they just kind of hit a reset button. Cole is not in his group that he created to, to mess with MJF anymore. (laughs) He wished them well. (laughs) Um, And then, uh, yeah. And then now we're just, I'm just going to do the the reverse. We did an Uno reverse on this. Um, yeah, I think the thing, the deniability when you say that 200,000 people stop watching, which is true, uh, <laughs> is, is that MJF and Cole's segment still did the best on all those shows. It's the... <laughs> it's, also, you know. it's also a misleading or a fallacy of a statement because... I'm sure those 200,000 people are still watching this show. They're just watching it on a DVR three days later Correct. instead of watching it live on Wednesday night. So, you know, I don't think wrestling fans ever go away. I think there's still a million and a half people that watch Dynamite every week. It's just 900,000 of them watch on DVR now. <laughs> right. Exactly. So it's like, but it's fun to say. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, it is fun and not to say. inaccurate, technically. Uh, <laughs> right. But yes, my thought. Yeah, that's. It does feel very stale. Like the second that Adam Cole came out to feud with MJF, regardless of who's the heel and who's the baby face, I was like, wow, this feels, uh, this feels real 2023. Doesn't it? <laughs> this is, this is retro. Yeah. This is uh, this is a real throwback here, but um, look, glad Adam Cole's finally healthy guy got hurt at grand slam a year ago and was out the whole time. Yeah. So uh, hope, hope that guy's doing good. And uh, like I said, I hope both he and MJF move on to something uh, else somewhat quickly here. I guess it will depend on how much uh, MJF can be in during this next little bit while he's off uh, filming a movie or two. All oh, right. And, oh, and Swerve is uh, feuding with Shelton Benjamin and, and MVP. I assume the Lashley debut is is coming one of these weeks soon, but. Yeah, um, look, I don't have a problem with... Uh, I've always enjoyed Shelton Benjamin's work. <laughs> it's just weird. It's just weird. Shelton's late 40s, uh, you know, 20-plus year vet. 
MVP and Shelton Benjamin are running around this show now. It's it's just I don't know. In and of itself, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's kind of an o- act that was more over than its push in WWE. Mm-hmm. The Hurt Business and uh, the non Lashley have... division of the Hurt Business. Yeah, and then you know Lashley looks like an action figure, always has, mm-hmm. and is going to come in and Lashley's good on uh, good doing media and stuff, and we need people that do local media here on this company. And I don't know, it's just uh, it in and of itself. I don't have a problem with any single one of these things that the company's doing. It's just t- when you add it all together, um, you know, it doesn't feel real cohesive to yeah. me, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to your point, we already kind of touched on this with the elite stuff, but it's like there's a lot of s- heel factions running around. <laughs> yeah. You got Christians, guys. You got the elite. You've got whatever this MVP thing is going to be. You've got Moxley's group. I'm sure there's... Bang others. Bang Ganger kind of baby faces now. Yes, Bang Bang Ganger baby faces sort of by default. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which is fine because it was kind of a baby face act anyway. Um, anything so, involving juices, but so so Jay White beats Hangman at the pay per view. Christian is still running around with his guaranteed title shot. Christian, <laughs> Christian beats Jay White clean or not clean. He not had clean. you know, but Christian beats Jay White on Dynamite. What are we doing? Who's next in line for Moxley, and what are we doing? That's a great question. Um, again, going back to the need to start getting some guys ready. When you look at who's paired off. Okay, so Jay White just lost again, so he's probably not getting the title shot, and now he's going to be still feuding with Hangman. Um, Why are we handing out jobs over Hangman? <laughs> Hangman losses <laughs> should be very few and far between, and they should mean something when they happen. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, it shouldn't be erased three days later <laughs> at the very least. No. Yeah, it should be, hell? yeah, it should be to build a guy up to get a title shot, if that's what you're doing. Um. But yeah, so now so you have just process of elimination. Jay and uh, Jay and Hangman paired off. You have Adam Cole and MJF paired off. Uh, Orange Cassidy and so it's like Orange Cassidy level guy going to challenge Moxley. I mean, Moxley and him have feuded before, so I guess you could call back to that. But it's like that doesn't feel doesn't feel particularly exciting. Uh, Orange Danny Garcia. Yeah, it's like those level guys. Again, assuming we're holding off on Darby going after the belt, he did get a get a win on the pay per view. But uh, otherwise, it's like yeah, you kind of you got a lot of <laughs> you got a lot of uh, baby, all of your top baby faces that would seem obvious to go to Swerve, like we said, doing something with uh, with with this new group. So it's like yeah, I don't really know who's left over. Um for unless you're you're gonna do like a tournament or something i know speaking of like when they take when wrestling companies take a month off they've got like another month here before the uh the collector classic what the hell's continental classic uh starts which will be the majority of television for december i would imagine so but you got one more pay-per-view before then you got a book for so yeah, yeah, I will be very curious, and I don't feel like there are any obvious choices unless it's Orange or Daniel Garcia, which is fine, but that's that's not a pay per view main event. That's a <laughs> that's like a really good collision main event, maybe, and a yeah. okay dynamite main event. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get out of here. Is there anything else you want to discuss? No, I saw um, I saw uh, Bella's mom uh, divorce Johnny Ace. Or announced her divorce from Johnny Ace this week. Yeah, I'm glad he's having a bad day. Yeah, glad he's. I hope it's awful. I also just speculatively would like to think that maybe the timeline of when we went from uh, Johnny Ace's lawyer saying he was a victim of Vince, like just like Janelle Grant, yeah, to when he suddenly uh, joined the other side and joined yeah. Vince McMahon's legal defense. Yeah, maybe maybe there's a timeline of when it was very clear that his marriage was not going to last. It's when yeah. that that switch happened. Yeah, that seems wise. All anyway, right, hope he's hope he's having a terrible day. Same. Until next time, I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now here are this week's bonus features. No, there's 
no Easter eggs. I'm, just, I'm not up to it. Go away. I try to keep on keeping on.